Well, hi, everyone, and welcome to part three in our series on spiritual combat. Now, something to you got to keep in mind. Children of God, members of the body of Christ, are not in this life in the flesh entitled to rule over fallen angels and demons in their various ranks. Now, this is very, very important uh, for everyone to understand. Even the archangel Michael, in disputing with Satan about the body of Moses, had to follow the protocols that God has set up. And we being a little lower than the angels, Hebrews 2.7, deceive ourselves when we assume that we can do otherwise and winding up with serious consequences. The Holy Spirit, through the Apostle Peter, tells us, But chiefly, them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government, presumptuous are they, self-willed, they are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Whereas angels, which are greater in power and might, bring not railing accusation against them before the Lord. But these, as natural brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption. And it's 2 Peter 2, 11 to 12. Satan's territory is therefore outside our given realm of authority. Anything done outside of our given realm of authority is, as the book of Jude says, considered rejection of authority. It is rejection of God's authority on the limited spheres of influence he gave us. Therefore, what members of the body of Christ need to do is never entertain these false supernatural combat teachings that have their roots in the occult, but to focus on the true God-centered, scriptural, satanic combat tactics by studying the scriptures, praying, and allowing the Holy Spirit to educate and train us in our role as indirect warriors in God's army. Now pay attention, we do not fight evil spirits directly, but fight them indirectly by focusing on the Lord Jesus Christ who has the power, who has the power to directly confront them. God, through his angels, has the power to directly confront evil spirits in all their set up places, occult world, spirit world, strongholds, and territories. Thus, victory comes by fulfilling our expected indirect responsibilities and not by our direct confrontation with evil spirits. Indirect confrontation is our responsibility. Direct confrontation is God's. Our role as members of the body of Christ, ambassadors for Christ, is indirect in nature. It is prayer to God seeking for his intervention submission to God, walking in love, forgiveness, charity, etc. It is challenging enough fulfilling our clearly spelled out indirect roles, and as such, we have no business to go after vague and unseen spirits. This is the Lord Jesus Christ's business, and he clearly sees them and their activity and has power over them. This special role comprises of fulfilling our expected part in our walk with Christ. The combination of our walk with God and committing life's battles into his hands constitutes our indirect role. The Lord Jesus Christ becomes our defender and acts on our behalf in dealing with matters confronting us and the people we commit to him. True biblical satanic combat tactics, that's a mouthful, are living a life of obedience and fellowship with God in that we enable God to effectively deal with the evil working against us and against other people. It overcomes Satan's legal and illegal grounds against us and others. This is seen in the outline of our spiritual armor given in Ephesians 6, 11, 18. True biblical satanic combat tactics are therefore indirect confrontations against Satan. We are only to approach God to intervene for us against Satan on matters in our lives and in the lives of others. It's true that Satan and his crew of fallen angels and demons are the primary enemies we wrestle against. 
It's also true that Almighty God has given us, as members of the body of Christ in the Bible, clear instructions on how to confront these evil beings whose full-time ministry is scheming to ruin our lives. Now, working outside of these biblical instructions only increases the satanic effect in our lives. Nowhere in the scripture do we see the Lord Jesus Christ or the apostles bombarding demons in thin air and calling it supernatural combat prayers or deliverance prayers. When Satan sought to sift the apostle Peter and finish him off, the Lord Jesus Christ did what? He prayed to God. Christ prayed that Peter's faith would not fail. And when he turned back from the attack, he'd strengthen his fellow disciples. Here's what it says. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he might sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Luke 22, 21 to 32. The Lord Jesus Christ, God made flesh, prayed to God the Father for the apostle Peter's deliverance. His supernatural pr combat prayer or deliverance prayer was addressed to God and not at Satan. How much more should we follow this example of indirect confrontation? All right. Now, in Ephesians 1.13, the Holy Spirit, through the Apostle Paul, declares that men are saved and sealed by hearing and believing the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. So therefore, here, right now, is declared unto you that word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and that is that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again at the third day according to the scriptures. 1 Corinthians 15, 3-4. Believe today. All right, the time is short. All right, so there you have it. Please spread this message to everyone you know far and wide. And grace be to you and peace from God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Bye-bye for now.